Welcome to Air Conditioning Contractors of America Duct Design Basics. In this course, we're going to cover the friction chart, the duct slide rule, and the manual D speed sheet basics. When we're completed, you should be able to fill out the speed sheet. You should be able to size duct using a duct slide rule or a friction chart. To understand duct design, we need to understand the basics of airflow. Well, return air is where the air goes into an air handler. This is a typical air handler unit that I'm showing you here. And then it goes through a filter. We all know that. There's a pressure drop across the filter. It goes into the blower. And from the blower, it gets pressure put on it. And then it blows up through the A coil or the heat exchanger. And then it goes out into the supply air system. And if the duct work is designed correctly, then it doesn't interfere or stop the air handler from producing the right amount of air and putting it through the heat exchanger. And everything works properly. This is a typical duct system. Our end goal from the 30,000 foot view is to be able to recognize every part on this system and recognize how to design every part on this system. And when you can do that, then you can design an entire system that works together and you get the right amount of airflow through the building. So every part of what we're talking about in this course will be to lead you in the direction that you need to go in order to be able to do that. This is a typical friction chart. In the end, you're going to know how to use a friction chart because we're going to go over this stuff so often that when you look at the friction chart, you're going to say, gee, that's simple. But initially, in the first course here, in the first part of the course, I'm going to go through it in warp drive, and it's going to be very hard, and some people are going to have a hard time following it. I'm going to say, don't panic, don't give up. You know, you're going to get it in the end. You'll have it all together by the time the course is finished, and you'll be able to use these duct uh, charts anytime you need to use them. Now, you can find them in the back in Appendix 2 in Manual D. And Manual D is much more thorough on everything than what this course is going to be. It, it covers more little finite details than what we're going to do here. But we're going to give you the basics here. In other words, the hands-on stuff you need to actually do one and the very bare bones minimum to do it right. Here's the ACCA duct slide rule. We're going to cover this in detail in this course, and it's basically a friction chart. It's just in a circular pattern, and you can line things up and turn them around. And so instead of having the lines, the straight lines, it's all curves. And so this is the sexy one. This is the slide rule. This is what you want to use. Da, 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 da. Here's the manual D speed sheet. If I do my job correctly, when you finish this course, you'll be able to fill out one of these and you'll be able to understand every part of it. And it won't be any problem for you to design a duct system using manual D principles. The manual D speed sheet is available at www.acca.org slash speed sheet on our website. Or you can just look up speed sheet on our website and do a search and you can get it. And you can download it for free and it's there for you to use. It's the only limitation is it can only do certain sizes. It's only so big. So you might need to use more than one speed sheet for a large house with two systems or for a very large system. On the speed sheet, when you click on it, you get duct sizes and something you're going to need to look at is what fittings are there and what the fittings are. If you don't know what a fitting is, we're going to review them a little bit more in depth as we go forward with this, but you need to learn what duct fittings are, like 90s and T's and takeoffs and balancing dampers and all other parts. And you have to be able to identify all the parts, and we're going to help you to be able to do that. But basically, if you don't know how to do that, then you want to look at the appendix in Manual D that covers all the parts. And so they're in groups. And so Appendix 3 in Manual D covers all the different groups, and you can look through there and study that and you can see what the different things look like that are pieces and components of a duct system and then you'll be able to identify them quickly and pick them out and put them on the speed sheet. Manual D terms. Now these terms, I'm, I'm telling you these up front right here at the very beginning because when I use these terms I want you to wake up because these are things that in the end of this course you're going to need to be able to define yourself and understand how they work in order to be able to do a duct design. 
air velocity, available static pressure, component pressure loss, cubic feet per minute, equivalent length, external static pressure, friction rate, feet per minute, static pressure drop, and velocity pressure. Now don't worry if you can't do that all right now because at the end of the course you're going to be able to do that if you stay awake and you listen and but I especially want you to perk up and listen when I'm talking about these subjects and I'm going to repeat them several times so there's going to be several chances to figure out how you see it in your mind's eye so that you you can use it and design ducks. Remember the typical duct system that we saw earlier? Well now I'm going to give you a sneak peek of where we're going and where we're headed with it. This is the end goal of this course is to be able to design a duct system and to do it several ways. One way would be with a slide rule, the other way would be with a speed sheet and there are people who do it both ways and I would advise people to try it both ways because if you're doing it using a duct slide rule then you're doing all the math, you're adding everything up yourself. If you do it using a speed sheet and the slide rule then you got the best of both worlds because you can double check back and forth using them and you got a kind of a, a, a balance and a counterbalance. So we're teaching you both ways and we want you to use both ways because we want you to get the right answer and be a success. When you see this all throughout this whole training program, you see a box around something, a little box, and then you see a big box that's got a red around it. That means I blew it up and that means I made it bigger so you can see it. And it's just that section that's circled in red is the section that it's blown up. Let's take a closer look at row one. Most people think in terms of room, and it says room ID. I think a little bit differently based on my experience and hands-on in the field. Some rooms have more than one diffuser, so I, I basically just number the diffusers, and then it's a diffuser ID, and it's also a room ID if there's only one diffuser. So number one in this case is going to be the master bedroom. We're going to enter 8320 for heating BTUs per hour and 5600 for cooling heat BTUs per hour right here on the form. Wait a minute, where'd you get those numbers? Well, those numbers are given to us. They're by a designer who's done a manual J load calculation. And at the end of point of his whole design is to figure out the heating and cooling BTUs per hour that it takes to heat and cool a room. And voila, the blue stuff on the right fills out automatically. We have a heating CFM of 259 and a cooling CFM of 200. And those are based on the airflow, the total airflow of the whole system, which has been recorded elsewhere on the sheet. And that airflow was based on a manual S calculation, which was a heat, heating equipment or cooling equipment selection process. And that's the guidance that you use for picking the equipment that meets the load calculation that's on the manual J. We got design CFM of 259. Now that's not to be confused with the airflow that's going to go into the room later when we do the balancing because this design CFM is strictly for duct size design. If we ever tried to use this design CFM for balancing, we'd never balance the system because we've picked the larger number between the heating and cooling all the way down this column. And as you can see, some are on the cooling side and some are on the heating side. And the air handler itself or the heating equipment or cooling equipment won't put out the total CFM that we're, the, that we're going to come up with if we add up the design CFM. However, in order to have the ducts big enough to handle the air and not put a restriction on the system, we need to use a design CFM. So this is for duct sizing only, and in this case we want a 9 inch round duct. Boom! I blew up the other corner of the speed sheet so we can go on across and look at the whole row. For those who just woke up when I said boom, we've been coming across the page on the first row and we're all the way across to where we have a galvanized duct final size of 9 inch round. Sometimes you want to run rectangular duct and one reason is because you want to put a little narrower in the ceiling than 9 inches. And if we wanted to put 8 inches up in the ceiling, then we would put 8 in the yellow here and it automatically does the math for us and it'll do 8 by 8 is equivalent to 9 inch round. We also conveniently have equivalent length for flex of 10 inch. Well, why is that different than the galvanized? Well, there's a different resistance. And this all relates back to the friction charts. And the mathematics for all the friction charts is buried into this program. And it does the math for you automatically. And it does the conversions for you automatically based on the inputs that you put on the left side. That's why it's so important to put the right inputs in. Well, the goal of this training is to get you to be able to complete a manual D speed sheet, to be able to figure out a duct design using the duct slide rule possibly, 
and to be able to do the same thing using the friction sheets possibly and to be able to do, know the math that you need to know in order to do it. It's not that complicated. We're going to show it. We're going to walk through it one step at a time. You can also use any of the softwares that are out there. They can all have the same thing because it's all based on the same designs and the same requirements that are in that manual D because manual D is what's required by code for residential applications. In the end, we want you to just relax, enjoy the course, and learn what you need to learn in order to do duct designs. And if you didn't learn how to do the basics of duct designs when you're done with this course, give me a call and tell me where I went wrong. I greatly appreciate it.